Salatul Istikhara is the prayer for guidance for choosing the best option. And it has a specific supplication or a dua attached to it. When a problem confronts us and we are not able to decide how to resolve it, we should turn to our Rabb. We should ask him to set us in the right direction because after us, after all, no one knows us and no one can be closer to us than he is. Palmistry, astrology, numerology, feng shui, they have no place in Islam. Faint-hearted people who have weak iman turn to astrologers, palmists and tarot card readers. Looking for shortcuts and easy answers, these people become victims of deception at the hands of self-proclaimed holy men or charlatans. In the time of the Rasul wasallam, a class of deceivers known as soothsayers and diviners existed in the Arabic society. They pretended to know the future as well as the past through their contact with jinn and through other means. Allah's Messenger wasallam, declared war against their deception which has no basis in our divine religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran very clearly in Surah An-Naml قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Say, no one in the heavens or earth knows the ghayb, knows the unseen, knows what lies beyond our sense perceptions except Allah. That's why believing in those who foretell the future is an act of kufr or disbelief. And the campaign of Islam was not limited to soothsayers and diviners, but included those people who go to them, who sponsor them, and who believe in them, and who seek their help, and who believe in their superstitions and in their predictions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the prayer of a person who goes to a soothsayer, the salah, the namaz of a person who goes to a soothsayer, asks him for something and believes in what he says, will not be accepted for 40 days. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said in this hadith, in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, whoever goes to a soothsayer and believes in what he says, has denied, this person has rejected what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very clear hadith. A person who goes to this person, believes in what he says, that person has rejected what was revealed to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has liberated believers from such superstitions by giving them the gift of salatul istikhara through his final prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But before you do istikhara, you need to understand and do istishara. Istishara is consulting people and gathering information which is half the decision making process. It's actually talking to people, finding out your information before you make decision. You need to gather as much information about the matter you're going to make a decision on before you make istikhara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with those who do their best to find the correct course of action or the most beneficial course of action. Who do you ask for istishara? The answer is very simple. Anybody who can benefit you in that particular matter. It could be someone at the masjid you trust. It could be your friends or family matters that you trust. But people who have experience in the matter that you are seeking uh, advice on. Not somebody who is just going to have empty talk. After istishara, you do istikhara. Istishara is between you and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And istikhara is between you and your maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istikhara is actually the name of a salah. It's actually the name of a prayer of a man 
or a woman who has yet not made up their mind about something they intend to do. It could be getting a job, getting married, going for Hajj, choosing a house, making a career change, anything and everything. Istishara means to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide one to the right kind of action concerning any matter. It is to seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by offering the salah and making the dua that is taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that salah. We should practice the dua of istikhara in regard to every significant matter. Whether Whenever one is ignorant of the good or the evil outcome, you just don't know how it will turn. Whether it will be of benefit to you or it will uh, be of detriment to you. The sikhara is made for something, this is another point to keep in mind, that you are unsure about. Meaning that you have mentally not decided, you are not committed to it. So it's not like you, know, you say, yeah I know this is what I'm going to do, now I'm just going to do the istikhara. Just because it's something I'm supposed to do. No. It's something that you're really split. You're really divided about it. You can't really make your mind which way to go. You're unsure. That's when you make istikhara. If you've already made up your mind, what exactly are you consulting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? So in other words, when you are unsure, that's when you make istikhara. Istikhara is mentioned to us uh, in a beautiful hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala which is collected by Imam al-Bukhari he says that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach us how to seek guidance in choosing the best course of action available in a practical enterprise so istikhara is not necessarily about a religious decision it's about your dunya. Okay? It's decisions of this dunya. The things that you are faced with in this life. One very important thing over here is that you don't make istikhara about something that is haram. Okay? So you make istikhara about things that fall in the realm of halal or permissible. But you don't make istikhara. Should I go to the club? Should I drink alcohol? You don't make istikhara about those things. Okay? Should I do this sin this one time? Then I'll make tawbah. Let me make istikhara. You don't do that. In anything that is sinful, that is haram, there is no istikhara in that. Because the answer is already clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told you what the answer is. There is nothing for there to seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala says, just, the Sallallahu used to teach us how to consult with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would teach us a surah from the Quran. Meaning with that much vigor, that much motivation, with that much dedication, with that much emphasis. If one of you is concerned about some practical undertaking, he should perform two rak'ah of voluntary prayer other than the fard salah. So this is not your two rak'ah of fajr salah. This is not any of the regular prayers which we pray which are fard. Other than this, you offer two rak'ah, just two rak'ah, two rak'ah nafal, that's it. Then Jabir ibn Abdullah says that Rasulullah Sassan said, you would say, اللهم إني أستخيرك بعلمك واستقدرك بقدرتك وأسألك من فضلك العظيم فإنك تقدر ولا أقدر وتعلم ولا أعلم وأنت علام الغيوب اللهم إن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر خير لي في ديني ومعاشي وعقبة أمري أو قال صلى الله عليه وسلم عاجل أمري وآجله فقدره لي وإن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر شر لي في ديني ومعاشي وعقبة أمري أو قال صلى الله عليه وسلم في عاجل يمري وآجله فاصرفه عني واصرفني عنه وقدي وقدر لي الخير حيث كان ثم ردني به ويسمي حاجته. Now I'll uh, translate the, this, the translation, the meaning of the dua of istikhara, and it's important to understand what exactly is it that you're saying. Because many people they try to say these adhkar in the words of remembrance as if these are just magical words, they have no meaning. It's like a mantar, it's like a, you know, a charlatan, you know, just doing this, you know, dugdugi and just saying some words and they have a magical effect. You need to understand what is it that you are saying. 
what exactly you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for because there are some misconceptions which are built for this one simple reason people don't know what is the meaning of du'af istikhara they just don't know if they knew what is du'af istikhara a lot of people will not be able to make a fool out of them and will not be able to cheat them they would know exactly what is it that this meaning of this du'a is it's taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa it is not made up by any scholar it is not a suggestion of some religious holy man it, these exact words have been taught to us by the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they are in Sahih al-Bukhari. And this is the main hadith. There are not like 10 other hadith. This is the main hadith which tells us how to make istikhara. Oh Allah, I ask you to show me what is best through your knowledge. And bring it to pass through your power. Make it happen by your power, by your ability. And I ask you, of your immense favor for you are all powerful and I am not and you are the knower of the unseen Allamul Ghayyub Oh Allah if you know this matter and if this time you should state what is this matter that you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you can say it in your language any language you know of course you don't have to say it in Arabic if you don't speak Arabic so Allah if you know this matter, changing jobs, changing career, uh, applying somewhere else, buying this house, buying this car, whatever, starting a new business, whatever it is, is in the best interest of my deen. So, you know, it's not going to hurt my religious uh, commitment. It's not going to, I won't have to compromise on my salah. I won't have to indulge in haram. Uh, transactions I won't I mean, it's, it's not going to hurt my deen so if you, if you know it's going to be good for my deen my life in this world it's going to be good for me, for me financially and in other, other ways you know. and the final outcome in both the short term and the long term then bring it about and make it easy for me and bless me with abundance in it and if you know that this undertaking is bad for me in my deen my life in this world and the final outcome in both the short term and the long term then turn it away from me and turn me away from it and bring about the good for me whatever it may be and then make me pleased with it then take me towards what is actually going to be of benefit to me and make me happy with it because sometimes you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our decision, but we are not happy. That's what you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here. That, oh Allah, you're, if you're going to make my decision and I'm leaving this up to you, then make me happy with your decision. Make me satisfied with your decision. Whether I see the outcome, whether I see the wisdom of your decision or I don't, make me happy and pleased with it. So we have been given this powerful tool to admit our complete lack of knowledge, power and ability and the absolute knowledge, power and ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of our affairs and in our daily life. Salatul Istikhara is a sunnah, as you, as you know from the hadith of Jabir. It's a clear teaching and instruction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the procedure is very simple. You make wudu like you do for any prayer or for anything else. You make wudu. Then you offer two raka'ah, nafal, other than fourth prayer. You end your salah with taslim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You just pray the two raka'ah like you would pray any two raka'ah nafal. You remain seated. And if you have this dua memorized, then you make this dua while you are sitting after your salah from memory. If not, you can take your smartphone, you can take a piece of paper, or you can take a book. Anything on which it's written and say the dua. There is no specific surah in the first and the second rakah that you have to recite. You can recite anything you like. You can repeat the same surah. The matter is flexible. There is no specific surahs to recite in the first rakah or the second rakah of this prayer. Also there is no limit to how many times you can pray Salatul Istikhara for one particular matter or for how many days. If you go online and search on Google, you will see people saying, do it for seven days. Okay, where did they get, get it from? The only one who can say is do it for seven days is one man. And his name is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the only one who can say that. 
Nobody else can say do it four times, five times, six times, seven times. Nid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not say do it for seven days. You can do it for one day, you can do it for one year. There is no upper or lower limit to it. Well, at least you have to do it one time, but you can do it as many times as you like. And keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that matter. There is no limit to it. Also, you can do it once in a day, once a week, once a month, or two times in a day, or three times in a day. It's up to you. There is no limit. How frequently uh, you can make Salatul Istikhara. The next question after understanding the simple procedure is the response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The response to your istikhara. This is where there is a lot of confusion. And mostly that confusion comes because people simply do not know the meaning of the dua of istikhara. If they just know the meaning of the dua of istikhara, much of this confusion about the response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not exist. That's why it's very important to know what is it that I'm saying. <clears throat> Should a person expect a response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like a dream? Maybe an email, maybe a text message. What exactly will be the response? The answer is no. You are just asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you make the best decision. That's what you are doing. That's what the dua is. You are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and to guide you make the best decision. Whatever decision you decide to make will inshallah will be with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeping in mind that you also did istishara. That's something which unfortunately sometimes people conveniently skip. They don't take advice. They don't learn from the experiences of others. Okay? That's why I mentioned istishara comes first. And you do istishara with the people who know about that matter. And then you do istikhara. There are two components to it. A common misconception is that Salatul Istikhara will eventually result in a dream. The response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Salatul Istikhara will definitely be in a form of a dream. You can have a dream. It is possible. But you don't have to. Because if you review the words of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find that you are not asking for a dream. It is no dream. You are not asking, oh Allah, show me a dream. And tell me which way I should go. You are not asking for that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are simply asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to turn your affairs in the best possible way. Because one did not have a dream, does not mean it did not work. Dream is possible, but it's not necessary. Imam al nawawi wrote, the famous Imam al nawawi the author of Riyadh Salihin, after practicing the istikhara, a person should do whatever his heart is wholeheartedly inclined to and feels good about doing. If his feelings change, then he should leave what he has intended to do. Istikhara prayer can be done at any time in the day. Except the three times which are known as the forbidden times. This is a time when in, we, cannot, we are not allowed to pray, period. The first is after Fajr, after you have prayed Fajr, till the sun rises, the length of a spear above the horizon. So this is about 20 minutes after sunrise. So let's say you prayed Fajr whenever, right? in the time for Fajr. Sunrise, let's say, I'm making it up, it's 6 o'clock. So you are not allowed, after you have prayed Fajr, let's say 5.30 until 6.20. 20 minutes after sunrise. You can make Salatul Istikhara before 5.30. You know, before you pray Fajr, you can do that. Or you can do it after 6.20. You can do that. But not in this small window. The second is from the time the sun is at the highest point in the sky until it moves on. Say 15 minutes before Zohar. So you just look at the schedule. So let's say at the schedule it says time for Zohar starts at 12.45. Let's say. So you don't pray from 12.30 to 12.45. This 10-15 minute window. That's the second time when we don't offer any prayer. Okay? This is the time uh, which we are not allowed to offer any prayer. The third is after praying Asr till the sun has set. So whenever you pray Asr, let me again give you an example. Let's say you pray Asr um, at uh, 5.30. Okay? And let's say the sun sets at 7 o'clock. So from 5.30 until 7, you don't offer any prayer, like some Nafal prayers or Sunnah prayers or whatever, and you don't pray Salatul Istikhara as well. So in this window also you don't pray. You can pray before that 
and you can pray after 7 o'clock. After the sun has set, you're free to pray again. Some people think that the right time for making istikhara is before going to bed. And this is another condition which some people have made up themselves. This is not true. If you want to make Salatul Istikhara before going to bed, that happens to be a convenient time for you, by all means do so. But don't think that this is something Rasulullah has told us. Don't think that this is one of the etiquettes of making Salatul Istikhara or that this is the proper procedure or method of slaying, praying Salatul Istikhara. It's an open matter. If you choose to do so, that's your choice. You're free to do so, but you are not bound to do so. It's not something that you're required to. With the exception of those three times, you can make Salatul Istikhara at any time of the day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us in making the best decisions for ourselves and our lives and our families that are good for us in this deen and that are good for us in the life to come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us ikhlas and sincerity and enable us to follow the footsteps of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.